Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So in this video I'm going to explain how to make a Hertz based LFO using the formula controller. So this is going to be an LFO where the speed is set in Hertz. So I've got my project set to 60 BPM so that when this LFO is at 1 Hertz we're going to have the metronome in sync with this frequency. So I've also built this metronome here. I just have a citrus and a MIDI out plugin so you can more easily hear what the frequency is. So if I have two hertz, I'm going to have two clicks from this patch against one click of the project. And this would be three clicks, like three hertz, and this is four hertz, and so on. But this is also going to be tempo independent, so I could change this to anything I want, and this four hertz is always going to be that same four hertz. So when I change this, it's going to take some time to recalculate, so you're going to hear this weird thing but after that it's always going to return to the same frequency and this is probably easier to hear if i set this to something like 120 so now it's two times 60 right so let's try what happens now i'm just also going to put this just to one hertz so we still have the one hertz even though our project is 120. And now you might think, why am I putting so much emphasis on this simple sounding concept? But it's that before the get tempo function, it wasn't really possible to easily achieve this because you would have had to input the tempo manually. So this patch wouldn't have been nearly as convenient as it is now because you would have always had to set the BPM manually to this formula. So this get tempo function is is a newly added function that returns the current project BPM. So if I change this, you can see that this value here is also changing with the BPM. And I'm just multiplying it by 0.1 because otherwise it wouldn't fit here into the monitor because right now it would be trying to output 51, which is not gonna work because the maximum value is one. So I've just scaled it down and we can see that we have the correct value except that our decimal point is just at a different position. So let's take a look at how this patch actually works. So these two are just the metronome but what we want to look at is this formula controller here which is open right now. So I have this formula for a sine function. So this is a sine LFO. And inside of the sine function, we have B times 50. So B is this slider here. So when I change it, you can see that B is also changing. And I'm multiplying it by 50 because I just set 50 as the maximum value of this LFO. So 50 hertz is the fastest that you can set this to. And you might also notice that we have a decimal point. So yes, you can also set this to a fraction of a hertz. So we could do like 0 0.5 hertz. So this slider is connected to a parameter. So when I move it, a parameter is also moving. And I'm adding it into this part and I'm using this mapping function and it's essentially just to map the value correctly into the slider so that whatever I set here is going to output the correct value. So this entire thing that I've also put into parentheses is taking care of the surface control so that whatever I set here is going to output the correct frequency. And next up we have two times pi times song time and this is just the standard procedure to get the cycle of the sine function to complete so that we have a seamless pattern that doesn't just randomly cut out and yeah we just want to make it smooth and repeating correctly and then i have this times 60 and this is to scale this frequency part into the minute domain if that makes sense because then we're doing division with get tempo and get tempo is returning beats per minute so i'm just gonna set this to one hertz and let's take this out. So let's see what would happen if we didn't do this multiplication at all. So now you'll notice that our LFO is very slow and right now this would actually take 
an entire minute to complete just a single cycle. So yeah, this is why we have to scale it with 60 to make the unit of both of these sides of the division to be the same. And now I wanna talk about automating this. So automating this is possible, but it's not gonna work quite how you would expect it to work. So if you wanna make seamless automation of the frequency of an LFO, I recommend using the peak controller or something else because there's a couple of problems with this formula controller method. And this next part of the video is going to require some prior knowledge of calculus and some math concepts. So if you don't know anything about that, this is probably gonna make no sense to you whatsoever. This patch is gonna be linked in the description so you can download it and just start messing with it. But if you're interested to find out why the automation of this doesn't work, I'm gonna attempt to explain it now. So first of all, let's listen to what happens if I attempt to automate the frequency here. So I've got this triangle shape and what you would probably expect to happen is that as the graph increases, the frequency also increases in accordance to that. And when it switches direction, it would start decreasing. So at the bottom here, it would be zero hertz and at the top, say 10 hertz. And when it switches direction, it would start going backwards from 10 hertz back to zero. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit so that the frequency doesn't increase that much. So let's test this hypothesis. So you'll hear that it progressively gets faster and kind of goes out of control, almost as if it's growing exponentially. So it really makes no sense if what I wanted to automate was the frequency. So let's compare what happens in this other section with the square shape, which means alternating discrete values. So in here, nothing is constantly changing. We just have some value which will instantaneously flip into some other value. So it's kind of same as this slider in and on itself because right here we could change this and then we just leave it at some specific value. So let's see what happens now. So now it sounds completely normal. So you would expect it to have some frequency and when it changes, have some other frequency. And here in this other part, it's the same thing. And it's, it's not going crazy because of the time progressing or anything like that. So why doesn't this work when there's a shape that is kind of constantly changing against time? To put this as simply as I can in a reasonable amount of time, a multiplier of a changing variable, so in our case, song time, will only adjust frequency in a linear manner if that multiplier is a constant value. So if we have some constant multiplier like right now, so if I disable the automation and we just have this 15 Hertz here, it's just going to be at that 15 Hertz, no problem. Everything works as long as the multiplier is not also changing against time. So we're not multiplying two values that both change against time. Because this is simply just going to break the equal relationship and this graph is no longer changing the frequency in accordance to the rules that we want it to follow. Meaning that here at the bottom is the minimum value, like the minimum frequency, and at the top is the maximum frequency frequency and that the frequency just linearly follows the change in this vertical axis. If I were to try and fix this, I would have to add the B parameter as a phase offset instead of multiplying it here. So this is essentially the multiplier, like this entire part. So I would have to change this to be addition. And this would be the equivalent to phase modulation. So this time the automation graph would change phase in an equal relationship. So let's see now what happens when I've modified the formula. So now B is being added as a phase offset. And remember, B is the thing that we're automating. So this slider in B 
are connected. I'm also going to increase this a little bit and let's see what happens. So this time, a triangle shape results in two distinct frequencies, just like a square. The reason for this is that it's the phase shift that has the equal relationship with the automation graph, but the frequency is actually following the derivative of it, meaning the slope of the graph. So when the slope goes up but is constant, the result is that we hear some distinct frequency. And when the slope goes to the other direction, we hear some other but lower frequency. This is because frequency by definition means the rate of change of phase. So it's how fast phase changes per second. Okay, so here comes the big reveal. <laughs> Making this have an equal relationship with the frequency is actually impossible because we would need to integrate whatever this graph is. And there's no way to do it other than by hand, which really makes no sense. It's just not practical and you're better off using peak controller, unless you're happy with using a square shape to automate, which will work just as expected. I'm currently working on a video about frequency and phase modulation, so this topic will be covered super in depth in the future. The video just requires a ton of research and proofreading, so it might still take a while. With modulation, there actually are functions that we can use to make this work, but there are only just a few specific ones, like a sine and a square as the modulator. But yeah, hopefully you found this video interesting, and it was also just to introduce this new get tempo function added to formula controller, which I'm sure will be very useful in many other applications as well. So please like this video and leave a comment and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.